wherever we turn, we witness the triumph of capital. Capital has prevailed everywhere. In warehouses, factories, offices, universities, even in public hospitals, in the media, in space, but also in the microcosm of genetic engineering. So how do I dare claim that capitalism has been killed? By whom? The deliciously ironic answer is that capitalism was killed by its own hand, by capital. If I am right, the issue is not what AI will do to us in the future, but what has already happened. Capital became so dominant that it mutated into a variant so toxic that like a stupid virus, it killed off its host, capitalism, replacing it with something far, far worse. This new mutant capital that killed capitalism lives in the proverbial cloud. So let us call it cloud capital. What is cloud capital? What makes it so different? Cloud capital, of course, does not really live up in the cloud. It lives down on Earth, comprising network machines, server farms, cell towers, software, AI-driven algorithms. And of course, it lives on our ocean's floors, where untold miles of optic fiber cables rest. Unlike traditional capital, from fishing rods to the steam engines of the Industrial Revolution, to today's modern industrial robots that are produced means of production, cloud capital does not produce anything. It comprises machines manufactured so as to modify human behavior. That's what Amazon's Alexa, or Google's Assistant, or Apple's Siri is. It is a produced means of behavioral modification. It is a machine, a piece of capital, which we train to train us, to train it, to train us, and so on and so forth, to determine that which we want. And once we want it, the same network machine sells it to us directly, bypassing markets. As if that were not enough. The same machinery succeeds in making us sustain the enormous behavioral modification machine network to which it belongs with our free voluntary labor. We are sustaining it as we post reviews, rate products, upload videos, rants, photos. We help reproduce cloud capital without getting a penny for our labor. In essence, it has turned us into its cloud serfs. Meanwhile, in the factories and the warehouses, where waged proletarians work under increasingly precarious conditions, the same algorithms that modify our behavior and sell products to us directly, those algorithms are deployed, usually by digital devices tied to the workers' wrists, to make proletarians, workers, in the warehouses, in the factories, work faster to direct and to monitor them in real time. I started by saying that wherever we turn, we stumble on the triumph of capital. But it is cloud capital that is the real winner. It is amazing how it performs at once five roles that used to be beyond capital's capacities. Cloud capital grabs our attention. It manufactures our desires. It sells to us directly, outside any traditional markets, that which is going to satiate the desires it made us have. Cloud capital also drives proletarian labor inside the workplaces. And it elicits massive free labor from us, the cloud serves. Is it surprising that the owners of this cloud capital, let's call them cloudalists, that these people have a hitherto undreamt power to extract, to extract gargantuan surplus value from proletarians, untold quantities of free labor from almost everyone, and mind-numbing cloud rents from vassal capitalists, from sellers. Is it a wonder that they are vastly more powerful than Henry Ford or even Rupert Murdoch could ever be? Hang on, I hear you say. Is Jeff Bezos really different to Henry Ford? Aren't they all a species of monopoly capitalists? Monopolists? No. 
Amazon.com is not a monopolistic capitalist enterprise. The moment you enter Amazon.com, you have exited capitalism altogether. Sure enough, the place is teeming with buyers and sellers. So yes, it is an enormous trading platform. But no, a market? It certainly is not. One man called Jeff owns everything. But he's much, much more than a mere monopolist. Jeff doesn't own the factories that produce the stuff sold on his platform by traditional capitalists who have to use it to ply their trade. What he does own is more important. Jeff owns the algorithm that decides which products you see and which you don't see. The very algorithm that you have trained to know you perfectly so that it matches you with a seller, whom it also knows perfectly well, with a view to maximizing the probability that every such match transaction will generate for Jeff the highest rent that Jeff can charge the seller for what you buy. Up to 40% of what you pay is pocketed by Jeff, the cloudalist. The mind rebels at the enormity, but also the radical novelty of this kind of exploitation. The same algorithm that we help train in real time to know us inside out. That same algorithm both modifies our preferences and administers the selection and delivery of commodities that will satisfy these preferences. If you and I were to type electric bicycles or binoculars while in Amazon.com, you and I would get totally different recommendations. In a traditional market or shopping market, it would be as if you and I were walking next to each other, our eyes trained in the same direction, in the same shop window, but we were to see different things, depending on what Jeff's algorithm wants each one of us to see. Everyone navigating around Amazon.com, except Jeff Bezos, of course, everyone in Amazon.com is wandering around in an algorithmically constructed isolation, as if in a panopticon, where, unable to see each other, we only see Jeff's all-seeing algorithm, or more accurately, only what his algorithm allows us to see with a view to maximizing his cloud rent, which is, of course, today's version of the ground rent that the feudal lords used to extract from their vassals and their peasants. This is not capitalism. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to techno-feudalism. How did cloud capital kill capitalism? How did it rise up? Who paid for it? Capitalism, lest we forget, had two pillars, markets and profit. Of course, markets and profit remain ubiquitous. Nevertheless, cloud capital has evicted both markets and profit from the center of our socioeconomic system, pushing them out to its margins and replacing them, markets, the medium of capitalism, have been replaced by cloud thieves, digital trading platforms like Amazon.com or Alibaba, which, as we saw, look like, but are not, markets. And profit? The fuel of capitalism? Well, that has been replaced by its feudal predecessor, rent. But specifically, a new form of rent, a cloud rent, that must be paid for access to those cloud thieves or digital platforms. So how did cloud capital emerge? It began life in the late 1990s when the original internet, which was a commons, it functioned as a capitalism-free zone. That original internet, Internet 1.0 if you want, was privatized by the emergent big tech. And who paid for the trillions it cost to manufacture and to accumulate cloud capital so quickly in the hands of so very few cloudalists? The startling answer is... The G7 countries, central banks, mostly. How did that happen? Well, by accident, or to be more precise, by crisis. After the financial sector collapse of 2008, our central bankers printed up to $35 trillion to bail out the bankers at the time when the governments were subjecting our peoples to harsh austerity. Capitalists were clever enough to foresee that the many would be too impecunious to buy their stuff. So instead of investing, they took the central bank money to the stock exchange and the bond markets where they bought shares, bonds, along with yachts, art, bitcoin, NFTs, any asset they could lay their hands on. The only capitalists who actually invested in capital 
were big tech owners. For example, nine out of every ten dollars that went into creating Facebook came from these central bank monies. That's how cloud capital was financed and how the cloud elites became our new ruling class. As a result, Real power today resides not with the owners of machinery, buildings, railway and phone networks, industrial robots. These old-fashioned terrestrial capitalists continue to extract surplus value from wage labor, of course. But they are no longer in charge as they used to be. They have become vassals in relation to the owners of cloud capital, of the cloudalists. As for the rest of us, we have returned to a former status as serfs contributing to the wealth and power of the new ruling class with our unpaid labor, in addition to the wage labor we perform when we get a chance to do it. But surely, someone will say, this is still capitalism, isn't it? So you're still unconvinced. I know it is hard to part with the term, with the word capitalism. It is not just liberals who think of capitalism like fish think of the water they swim in as natural. Socialists too need to feel that our purpose in life, the reason why we came on this earth, is to overthrow capitalism. The news that I bring that capital beat us to it. And now we have something worse in capitalism's place. That news is hard to accept. Indeed, it is mostly my fellow traveling leftist friends who try to dissuade me, to convince me that yes, cloud capital may be important. But this is still capitalism, mate. Let's call it rentier capitalism or monopoly capitalism, they suggest. But that simply will not do. Cloud rent is not like ground rent. Because it requires massive investment in new tech. And it is not monopoly rent either. Because Bezos and Zuckerberg, instead of monopolizing markets to sell their manufacturers, like Henry Ford and Thomas Edison did, Bezos and Zuckerberg have replaced markets and have no interest in manufacturing anything, unlike Henry Ford and Thomas Edison. How about surveillance capitalism? Again, no, it won't do. Cloudalists do not simply use algorithms to brainwash us on behalf of advertisers in an otherwise capitalist setting. No, cloud capital reproduces itself through our free labor. It directly exploits waged labor and it squeezes cloud rents from vassal capitalists in trading platforms that are not markets. This is not capitalism, folks. Any kind of capitalism. But what about the observation that techno-feudalism is parasitic on the capitalist sector within it? Yes, it is true. Were the conventional capitalists to die out, cloudalists would perish, unable to skim off cloud rents from the manufacturers. So what? After capitalism overthrew feudalism, capitalists were also parasitic on landowners, in the sense that without private land producing food, capitalism would wither. Similarly now, while the traditional capitalist sector feeds techno-feudalism, it is cloud capital and cloud rent that dominate. Does it matter whether we call it techno-feudalism or some form of capitalism? At this point, it is important to recall Marx's maxim that the point is not to interpret, but to change the world. So does it matter if this is still capitalism or whether we call it techno-feudalism? I think it does. Recognizing that our world has become techno-feudal helps us grasp the enormity of what it will take to organize the victims of exorbitant power, the exploited, who now include not only wage laborers, but also the hordes of cloud serfs who are reproducing the very cloud capital that keeps them in a state of deepening precarity. The concept of techno-feudalism drives home the point that organizing auto workers and nurses, while still essential, is insufficient. It elucidates what it will take to organize the movements against the fossil fuel cartel when our means of communication are run on cloud capital primed to poison public opinion. It explains how the shift to electric cars caused German deindustrialization, as profits due to precision mechanical engineering are being replaced by rents extracted by owners of the cloud capital keeping tabs on the driver's routes and in-cabin habits. Elon Musk's decision to buy Twitter suddenly makes a lot more sense. 
Twitter for Musk is an interface between his mechanical capital stock at Tesla and SpaceX and cloud capital. The new Cold War between the United States and China, especially after the war in Ukraine, is explained as the repercussion of an underlying clash between two techno-feudalisms, one whose cloud rents are denominated in dollars, the other in one. Isn't it mind-boggling? It took mind-bending scientific breakthroughs, fantastical neural networks, and imagination-defying AI programs to accomplish what? To create a world where, while privatization and private equity assets strip all physical wealth around us, cloud capital goes about the business of asset stripping our brains. To own our minds individually, we must own cloud capital collectively. Once we have reclaimed our minds, we can put them collectively to work out a way to create a new cloud capital commons. It will be damned hard, but it's the only way we can turn our cloud-based artifacts from a produced means of behavioral modification to a produced means of human collaboration and emancipation. Cloud serves, cloud proles and cloud vassals of the world unite. We have nothing to lose, but our mind changes.